whole idea behind this was uh, Greg Musso, uh, Musso and I uh, were at a race recently, and I didn't get to talk to Greg about his Ironman Florida. And I said, man, let's, I want to hear about it, man. I want to hear about it because as an Ironman athlete, you want to hear about someone's, you know, either triumph or travesty. You know, I mean, I want to hear about it. And so uh, I'm glad y'all came out, and uh, I think it's, this will be pretty cool. So uh, let's hear about five minutes of each each person's race. Come on up and uh, first person. I'm not looking. <laughs> you know, Mike. Uh, Mike's overcome a, a crash this year, so I mean, we all overcome stuff to do this crazy racing. First name. Who folded it over with the glue towards? <laughs> Melissa! Melissa! Don't be intimidated by camera, Anya. Are you at the time start? Yeah. So, um, here it is. athlete I'm just I, I'm a completer not a computer and for me um, Arizona was after getting kicked out of Maryland and <laughs> that's, that's terrible. Um, Maryland didn't happen and so I got a choice to pick and I picked Arizona because that's where my cousin lives and my cousin was like come out here we'll be your escort we'll do whatever and I had no clue what would happen as Dick said he knew I'd cut it close but he's like god damn well, I didn't think it would be that close um, had, wouldn't have been that close had some wonderful cyclist had not decided to take me off the road and rear in me about like mile 41 or 42 and at that point it was like everything was on and I remember literally sitting in the middle of the gravel meeting going not today I do not have time for this I have got, I have not, I have got to finish what I started and from that time it was literally racing every single minute of the clock and it was like um, I was telling the girls earlier when we were at dinner I said if you would have seen my cousins I'm an only child and so when am I are my cousins they're my first cousins or my only cousins and they were like kids at Christmas, especially at the finish line. My cousin Mike's jumping up and down. Oh my God, you're an Ironman! Oh my God, my God, you're an Ironman! Keep going, keep going, It was like the first day of Christmas when he was a little kid. Like, oh, Santa's here. We gotta get up and go watch him. And I think that's when it hit me that how supportive my cousins were through the entire race. They never gave up on me. My cousin gave the speech. My mother's maiden name is Bess, and she goes, "We are best. We are stubborn. We never give up." And they, oh crap, it's a lot of that's heavy. I've got to keep going. And I think that. The, for me, Arizona is beautiful. It was a fluke. It was a fluke that it rained. It was a fluke that somebody hit me, but I finished. You know, I wouldn't have hoped that I would have had two minutes left before I was. It was my husband said, you checked every box, you hit every cutoff, and you are an Iron Man. And I think for anybody, um, you just, you, you figure out that day what you're capable of. I think that's what I was capable of. I wasn't going to roll over. I was like, I have to come too far. I'm going to go. They're going to, I remember Dana saying to me, you just keep going until they come after you. <laughs> <laughs> like, we, I literally got to my own 20. Uh, me and a 71 year old woman, I'm like, oh hell, she's up here at 71. I got no excuse. And she's like, oh good, we made it to a 21. The lady goes, oh no, you got six minutes to get past those cars. And I'm like, Fudge! So we and I are running as fast as we can. And we're like, okay. And then we're like, crap, it's 11.30. And I remember the guy looking at me, you have five minutes. I'm like, you need to back off. You know what the hell I And then I remember going through the shoot. And I don't know if you think about the shoot. I didn't see it until after. But I remember going through the shoot going, what the hell are these people still doing up? It's midnight. Go home. And it was like chaos and pandemonium. And when I crossed the finish line, I had not had my timing chip the day before to get in the water. In Arizona, in order to do the open water swim that day to test it, you have to have your timing chip. And I remember going, excuse me, excuse me, can someone please get my timing chip? I'm like, why are they not taking my timing chip off? I am done with this race. I want to be gone. And I'm like having to fight people to get my timing chip off. And the moral of the story is to always have a contingency plan with the group of people you come with because at that point I saw my cousins and it was like, oh God. We didn't figure out what was going to happen after I got done. Where do we meet? What do we do? You know, that type of yeah. thing. But I think the biggest thing is, it's just, you, you, like people said, you'll go to dark places, you'll do this, you'll do that. I'm like, I didn't have time to go to a dark place. I just knew. Um, I just got um, That's all I kept thinking. And my husband said it was poignant because I, you know, I was born and raised in Kansas City. I was excited when the Royals won the World Series. 
And like the Royal Series, like the Game Four of the World Series, when I came out of the water with a huge Charlie horse, I kept going, Game Four, Game Four, I'm not going to it. Because just like them, I never gave up. I, I would try to find little any interval I could, whether it would hide from those people. I didn't hide. They just never, never <laughs> got me. I just, the saddest thing, though, is when you see the vanishing with the people that saw you wreck, and you're like, oh, they got them. Oh, oh. I don't have time to worry about them. I keep riding. So. But yeah, I did bring my medal. And my watch kind of works, kind of not. I told my husband, I said, I really don't want to get it fixed because it's a reminder of what I went through. It's, you know, not that I might need a constant reminder, probably going to have a huge scar on the side of my leg. But, you know, I think we all have our stories, whether you're fast, slow, whatever. When you come across that finish line, it's not, it's nothing like you can ever imagine. So and that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. You even had we have a minute left. We just started Yeah. Anybody have a question for Melissa on the, the race? So, when you wrecked, were you on the Queen B or no, whatever, was Queen K? The, or? Yeah. That was you. I was on the second loop on B1. I wasn't yeah. on the second loop. And the thing about Arizona is you have that headway going out, but you get an awesome tailwind. You, know, you can, like, like one, I don't know, you, you've done that course. You can literally make up 30 minutes of your ride just coming back into town. I mean, it's wow. a phenomenal wow. course. If you ever go out, my yeah. husband lives in Mesa. He will put your bike together. He's allowed the Sherpa, so they are there for you. You can decide to do Arizona for some way out. He's like, I'll be able to do any bike. That, that is a fun course to do out there. It's, it's, a, great course. Course. So. it's a great course. And it's very, I think it's because the swim is, the swim, you know, most of the to see a swim, and people, everybody can watch the swim on that course. Yeah. So that means good. Yeah. Town Lake. Uh, is that it? Okay, cool. Greg Musso, number two. Our man, Florida. I felt a little awkward coming up here because what uh, what I did uh, in, the, in the Florida Pels in comparison to what some of these folks did, but it's all in fun and um, I share what. Uh, what my experience was nonetheless. Um, so my Florida 2015 came about because of what happened in Florida 2014. And uh, Florida 2014 was an abbreviated race because they canceled the swim. Uh, double red flags and riptides, so they called off the swim. It was the right call by Ironman or Ironman Corporation. They really needed to. Um, but they went on and we did a rolling start for the bike and then uh, for the you know, for the run. So it was really a duathlon and we were official finishers. And they made a big hoopla about you know us being official finishers, but I still didn't feel like that I got, I didn't get what I went down there for. Um, so uh, even before the end of the first Ironman, I had really already decided I would be going back down there for 2015 and doing it over again. Um, what I would say just for the race, you know, you really just have to find what inspires you and what motivates you. It's all a little bit different for each of us. Um, for me, I had uh, my stepfather was uh, diagnosed with cancer and it was terminally ill and he was going to have about six, uh, six to nine months left to live and that was when I had uh, really started amping up my Ironman training. So I dedicated it to him. So it was very easy for me to stay motivated throughout the year and uh, to go on uh, and, and to finish. And I was able to give him the give him my medal, and um, it was something special. So that was really what drew my inspiration for that for that first year. And really, for everybody, I think everybody pretty much has the physical ability to do it if you set your mind to it. It's more of a mental challenge than it is a physical challenge. Um, two or three years ago was when I first started doing road races uh, uh, for the first time in 20, 25 years. Anyway, I did them back when I was uh, young. But, um, just started off with a 5K road race, very small little road race in Gunnersville. That 5K um, led to a couple more 5Ks, then a, uh, the 10K, uh, the, the Cotton Row Run, which kind of led me to doing some mud runs, and then I started doing a triathlon a mini sprint at the very end of 2013. Went down and watched the Ironman down in Florida to spectate. Didn't know anything about anything. 
but I was truly inspired by watching some of those people come down through the finish line and through the shoot. And there were people that you wouldn't, that just to see them, you wouldn't think that's an Iron Man. And that really let me know that I could do it if I set my mind to it. So uh, I would say that for everybody. You know, if you want to do it, you can do it. You just got to find what inspires you and what motivates you um, to do it. So for Florida this year, uh, we know by 2014, it was horrendous wind. It was 39 degrees that morning. It got to a high, I think, in the upper 50s. Uh, this year was much more pleasant. The, uh, the weather was in the 70s to low 80s by midday. Tip, uh, the humidity was pretty bad. It was 94 percent humidity, which made the beginning of the run a little challenging. But the bike was sweet. It was flat, fast, a little bit of headwind coming back in, maybe 10 to 12 miles an hour, but uh, it was only single digits going out. So the bike was very pleasant and the run wasn't too bad either. Uh, flat, um, very well uh, hydration stations and food and all that. So, um, you know, if you if you uh, just put in the training and, and in the time, it's a very, very, very accomplishable uh, goal. And uh, I would just say the only other, uh, the only other thing that I would mention is for special needs. You know, go ahead and plan appropriately for your special needs, knowing that you might not ever need them. And the reason I say that is last year I needed stuff in my special needs on my bike, and I stopped and got it. I had stuff in special needs for run, and I blew right past that and didn't need it. This year was the complete opposite. I blew past the special needs on the bike, not needing anything, but uh, had to stop for special needs on the run. And for myself, I had uh, shammy cream for my feet. I had gotten some blisters with wet socks. Um, I actually had to change the socks, some blisters, some band-aids, uh, the cream, and actually changing my, my shoes. Um, so you never know what you're gonna need. Go ahead and plan for more because you might need something that you didn't uh, that you didn't take. So, uh, it was a great overall experience. Um, you know, like, we, like many have said, it's the journey, not really the event, it's the journey that leads up to the event. Um, I myself got a little choked up after the finish, um, you know, not, not for the race, but we were ref and reflecting on the post-race of all that led up to the race. Um, so uh, just find what, expi what inspires you and take it from there. Thanks. Todd? Right on. Okay. Uh, Greg, Greg actually uh, was maybe a part in 2014 of the funnest event I've ever done, and that's the 24 Hours of the Frog. Yeah. I'll tell you, that, that was freaking awesome. You know, if y'all don't know, we did the uh, Frantic Frog course in Scottsboro. We did a double course, so it was like an Olympic distance. And we just did it for uh, 24 hours. And we did it five times. I mean, so we started that morning, we did it all day, and we'd have, what, about 90 minutes maybe, maybe two hours between each one, 90 minutes. And uh, we just did it for 24 hours. That was freaking fun. And it was, I would say it was more challenging to me, that was more challenging than actually yeah. the rest. Well, you're not like the rest of us, or some of us who take a long time in Ironville. So, you know, we're out there, which is not supposed to be 24 hours, but it seems like it. Yeah. Any questions uh, for Greg? Okay, cool. Thanks, Greg. Appreciate it. Uh, next, uh, next guest is uh, Dana D. Gosh, five minutes. I'm really glad that the two of y'all are here. Um, so my first Ironman was Ironman Lake Tahoe, and I signed up because Eric said, this is going to be the most awesome, most epic race ever. You've got to do it. I'm like, yes, I'm in there. Somebody said something about altitude. And, and he said, no, nah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> um, I didn't know anything about it. I signed up um, and and went out. It was 28 degrees at the start. <laughs> it had snowed the night before. There was snow on the mountains. Um, it was, the fog was so thick you could not see. I was like, God, is my time up already? You couldn't see the, um, the buoys. It was absolutely ridiculous. But... Um, 
I had already planned, like, I'm going to go out and do the best I can and make them take my chip. Like, that was my whole thing. I will not stop. Um, <laughs> did the swim just when I got on the bike. The bike had about 9,500 feet of climb. Um, and it was anywhere from 5,500 feet to 7,200 feet of altitude. Um, and so, and altitude does really actually make a little bit of a difference. Um, the second time around that loop, um, I had told somebody, if you get off the bike and walk, you're done. Because somebody was like, oh, well, you can just walk. It's too bad. I'm like, no, you're done. You will be completely done. Um, the second time up Brockway, my legs were barely moving. And I could hear Eric in my head going, we love hills. I'm like, no, 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 absolutely not. No, I don't think I do right now. So I, and people in front of me were getting off the bike to walk. And I got off the bike and thought, my day's done, but I have to keep going. Um, made it miraculously through the bike with probably about 30 seconds to spare. Wow. Um, That's crying the whole time because <laughs> in that race, you, you can start a little bit early. And so I thought that because I had made the cutoff time, that I was over on the total time, which was wrong. But I came out of transition, I went into transition and came out of transition bawling, saying, I didn't, I didn't make it, I didn't make it. And Dwayne was there going, no, you did, you gotta run, you gotta run. I had to go, and I was just crying, going, no, they're gonna come and take my chip. And, and he's like, well, then let them take it, but you've gotta, you've gotta go. Um, so once I realized that the chip police were not actually going to come and take my chip, I ran and um, and never once that whole time thought I'm not going to make the cut off. I felt like I could run all night. I'll be fine. Um, finished about 1624-ish. Um, so then fast forward two years and I've had shoulder surgery, had a torn bicep tendon all through training for Lake Tahoe. Had it operated on in January, signed up for Ironman Chattanooga for 2015, and Dink in May said, what's your goal? And I said, well, I want to be sub-13. And he said, you really think you can? And I don't think he was saying it like, really? <laughs> but I said, well, you know, I've thought about this. If I do the swim in this, the bike in this, the run in this, I'm like, yeah, I think I can. Well, from May until September, Dink was with me in every training session. You really think you can? <laughs> I think I can. And Eric was with me on the hills. I love hills. I love hills. <laughs> Wayne was literally with me running hills. Um, he started running basically about a year ago and did all of my long runs. And it's rocking out. Yeah. Did all of my long runs with me. Um, when I got to Chattanooga, I... I said that morning, I have to have a perfect day because I didn't, I wasn't really sure if I could actually pull off a sub 13, but I said it has to be absolutely perfect. So we get in line for the swim. Dwayne was with me getting in line for the swim, pulling on my swim skin, and he goes to zip it up, and the zipper's broken. Aww. He's like, oh, the zipper's broken. I'm like, oh, that's real funny. Zip it up. He's like, no, it really is broken. I'm like, oh, crap, there's. That's the end of my perfect day. I haven't even gotten in the water. He got it fixed. I got through the swim in less time than what I thought it was going to take. I thought, okay, I've, I've banked some time for the bike. Got on the bike course, which I did Parker's camp um, in the summer and did one loop of the course and freaking loved it. It was the most amazing course ever. Um, rolling hills the whole time, but I thought... I only did one loop. The second loop is going to suck. It didn't. It was even better the second time around than it was the first time. It was the most amazing course. Absolutely loved every single second of it. Um, got off the bike in less time than what I thought it was going to take. And I thought, okay, now it's just the run. And I've been running hills, and I love hills, and I can't wait to do this. And about halfway through, I'm like, I don't know. My watch went dead. I did not have any gauge to know where I was in the run, so I kept telling myself, do your very best. Just do your very best. Let the result be what the result is, but give everything you have. Give every ounce of determination that you have to try to have that perfect day. Um, 
I saw Dwayne part the way through and he goes, um, I guess we have, had about five miles to go. And he said, you have to keep running. Like, you have to run every step. Oh my God, like that last five miles is really hilly on the run. It's extremely hilly on the run. And um, I walked a few steps and kept hearing him say, you have to run every step. Oh God, I gotta run, I gotta run. Crossed the finish line. He was in the finish shoot. He was a um, volunteer. And, and he said, you made it. I thought he meant like I had made the finish. And I was like, well, yeah, I made the finish. And of course the time said like 13, 20 or something um, because the time was different, but I had made it. It was 12.51. And I guess uh, athletes that do a race, I did uh, St. George a few years ago. They don't have St. George anymore, uh, which was a brutal freaking fool. And now Tahoe is not, yeah, they, they've canceled Tahoe. So you, you will be one of the few athletes brag about doing Lake Tahoe. The real Lake Tahoe. The real Lake Tahoe. <laughs> Without the smoke coming across. And, uh, with the, yeah. So congratulations. That's, that's great bragging rights forever. Thank you to Eric for having us on. Mike Bear. Mike Bear, come on up. Thank you. something that I used. Um, so so whether, whether, whether it was a swim, run, or, or biking, um, they said the, the bike was hilly, and it was pretty hilly. Um, they gave me a power number, and I kind of understand power, but I kind of don't. Um, but I didn't hit that number. Uh, but I wasn't over that number, so I wasn't over that number, so it set up for a very good run, I guess. Um, because my runtime was like 4.40, and my open marathon last year was like 4.20 or something like that, so I guess it was right where I was supposed to be. Um, and, and physically, I wasn't really too concerned. Um, I had some time cutoffs, but every coach said, you're not allowed to have time cutoffs, it's your first one. Um, and I'm like, well, what am I doing it for if I don't have any time goals? And they're like, to finish. You know, to finish. I'm like, yeah, I want to finish in this time. And uh, it, it, it took probably 18 months to get that out of my head that I can't have a time. Um, and then I seen Dana go under 13, and I was like, I can do that. I can do under 13 at this race. And uh, I still wasn't allowed to have time goal, but secretly that was my time goal. <laughs> um, and I don't know. Every... I, like you said, everything has to go perfect for you to hit your time goal. Um, but when I got on the course, I wasn't really too worried about the time. Um, when I got out of the swim, I didn't know where I was, like time-wise, because I don't look at the watch during the race. Um, I just, just go with it, except to hit lap or whatever. Um, but the swim seemed like it went fast, and I thought the swim would be the worst part. Um, I guess that's what happens when you swim tons in the winter like I'm doing now. Um, like right now I'm doing progressive swim it's 25, 50s and 100s every week and it sucks because now I'm like on 60, 60, 25, 60, 50s and 60 100s that shit takes forever <laughs> <laughs> I don't care where you are um, but yeah I got out and then we got on the bike and I'm looking at this number that I'm supposed to be at um, it's some kind of crazy number like no more power or something like that it's supposed to be like 160 
I'm at like 149. I'm like, why can't I get this to 160? Why can't I get this to 160? I'm going as hard as I can here. Well, not as hard as I can, but I'm like, I got to get this to 160, but it didn't happen. I think I, I think I was 158 or something like that at the end, so it was pretty close. Um, and we got on the run, and this was the part I was concerned about, really, like Greg said, mentally. You know, I just figured all the hats I've done, I broke down usually about halfway. Um, I don't know if that's just lack of going too hard on the bike or just being a wimp and not sucking it up. Um, probably all of the above. Because I, I like to ride the bike, you know, I like to ride the bike hard. Um, and all the coaches told me, you can't ride the bike hard. You know, you got a marathon after this. You cannot ride the bike hard. And I'm like, well, Tina and Dink ride the bike hard. <laughs> they, run, they run 330 marathons. <laughs> that's, that's my thing. I want to compare myself to all these elite athletes. You know, I'm not elite. I, I want to be like them, secretly. But um, it doesn't, doesn't work for me. But I was, I was really concerned mentally about the run, just where I was. And at some point, I think, Six months out or something, I decided that I was going to do a run walk um, because I always walked anyway. And I noticed my pattern was if I walked, then my race would be over um, mentally because I would just shut down and be like, "Well, I walked, now I'm screwed." So instead of start running again, I just be like, "Well, just walk it in," you know. So I'd be like, at a, I don't know, at like an hour and ten minutes for for a ten k after on, on a seventy point three, and then it would take me like an hour and twenty minutes for the next. In the, the next half, you know, so I was like, well, um, at some point I decided that I was going to do uh, three minutes. Is my time right now? Okay, that's it then. Okay, I, did a, uh, I just did a, a, a three minute run and a, and a 30 second walk, and, and I don't know what it was, but it worked. So that's it, since my time is up. I don't think I did that long. So, do they still finish, uh, Mike? Do they still finish along the restaurants down downtown? They still finish yeah. along the restaurants, yeah. and there's yeah. people there partying. And yeah, but when I see, I didn't get to finish. But when I got done, I thought I got you by truck. Yeah. Like, I just wanted to sit down, and like they got two chairs in the finish line. Yeah. And, like other people are sitting. I'm like, how is there two chairs? You know, there's twelve, there's three thousand athletes. Like two chairs. So I sit up yeah. and you know, I sit on the curb. I was like, they like that now. No, I got pictures of Jake Watson winning against the sign pole. I'm like, uh, you I got two chairs. I have no problem on the curve. You don't tell. I got two chairs. You don't tell. You don't be telling the tell. Yeah. All right, so uh, really? next uh, presenter is uh, Marine America. Yeah. Yeah. Because some of you do DNF. I am the DNF of the group. <laughs> it was my first one. I always said that I'm not having an item in me, so I don't have a food in me for years. <laughs> Everything started three years ago, my 50th birthday. I took Kendra <laughs> to do an item, and Dana went with us too. It was a trip for a long time. And we did a half in Nola. <laughs> and after that, it was a half after half after half. We did six, seven, I don't know. And um, Kendra surprised me last summer. Last summer, she sent me this picture. She said, I mean, you better get in. Said, what are you talking about? She already paid for me. So I don't want to hang your head around with $700. And I said, OK, you know I can. You can, you can. So um, the story about all of this is I can. And I should have finished the race. Um, all my friends that trained with me spent the whole summer saying, you can do this, you can do it. I didn't believe it until the last minute. Um, the morning I jumped in the water, it was very cold. The swim was challenging, but I felt so, so good. I get all the water frozen to death, and then it hit me, you are too cold. I never knew until probably that later, later at night, I spent 27 minutes in T1, mm -hmm. trying to get warm and feel, get some feel. I didn't know, I lost track of time, I was so cold, I guess, I don't know. But um, I went on my bike finally. I say finally now, not then. Then I saw, I just got on my bike. I'm ready to go. Oh. So I got on my bike. It was pretty difficult for me. I'm not a biker. I'm, I'm so swim, so, so swimmer and a good decent runner. I'm not a biker. Uh, I learned to bike for the first time in my life. 
at 49, 48 years old, so it was kind of very difficult. But uh, I felt so good before that, and never half Ironman. During the bike, it was the toughest for me. There's a point that I feel to cry, I feel like I cannot f finish. I have never hit the point like you say, during my runs, during my runs, I do whatever. So I was very surprised. I made the first count, and the bike was pretty good, and I felt pretty good. I know that was very slow and very behind. The wind was pretty bad. But I thought, I want to finish this. I, I can do it, I can do it. And um, I never felt bad. I never felt like crying. I just, strong enough, I reach in the finish line of the bike, and now these guys are doing this, and say they remind me to dismount, and you know, put the bike over the timing, and they say, you cannot cross the timing mount. They say, you can. And say, no. And they say, you just three minutes and some, something seconds. You know. And they say, oh, geez, what am I supposed to do right now? <laughs> so uh, prepare a plan B. I know it's not going to happen to you guys, but just in case. I took a picture later. Uh, it's all happened. We don't know what happened. I later took a picture of my time and all my things and my uh, watch because you have to post that on Facebook and tell your friends what you did. It was happened. <laughs> so I did that. And the next day, when I look at my post and when I post and look at my watch, it says 116 miles. I say, hey, what did you do two extra miles after the bike? So I did my two mile swim, it was a little shorter. I did 112 miles on the bike. I guess I was so ready to go for a run, to warm it around for two and something miles. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Is that in my watch? I didn't even know until the next day that two miles extra. I said, okay. Uh, anyway, the guy say, I'm sorry, are you okay? I said, I'm feeling pretty good. I just want to run, people let me run. <laughs> no, you can. Uh, I said, okay. Uh, I'm just sad. I wasn't mad. I was very, very sad. Um, one thing I have to, and I mean, the only thing I cannot tell you guys, so awesome athletes, I'm not an athlete, I'm just as <laughs> we can yeah. think it, is that um, I guess this kind of bio life doesn't apply to you in a sport, but in life, you can, you have to do things. You can know when until you think you're ready. Sometimes you're ready before you think that you're ready. If you wait until you're ready, it's always more training you can do, it's so always more planning, planning you can do, it's so always something new to learn, so more, well, so one day you have to say, okay, I have to do it, and you go and do it. I'm very sure I can do it, I'm very sure I couldn't do it, I'm very happy that I went to that race because I know now, for sure, <laughs> I can do it. Thank you, Kendra. It's your fault, I started, but it's also you uh, think that I'm ready to do it again. Oh, by the way, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try again. A good friend of mine a few years ago gave me this nickname, Junquito, means little angle in Spanish. Yeah, that's me. So yeah, I will try again. The best thing in Maryland, the uh, the helpers, the uh, um, there were half of them because you know they, they have to postpone the race, so there was not a lot of volunteers. <laughs> More, a lot of them pulled double duty. They were there in the morning, they were there at night, they were there in the swing, they were there in the bath. They were very, very awesome. Um, if you go to Maryland, it's tough, it's very tough, but it's a very good race, I love. Now I'm saying that. Uh, one thing you didn't talk about was the, uh, the problem that y'all had at Maryland and that they canceled the event. Right? Yeah. So y'all had to deal with that as well. Yeah. 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 That was very, I mean, yeah. uh, when, we see, when we were there the first time, we come back and say, now what? Because at first it was not a rescheduled race. So what, well, we've been um, for two weeks doing, you know, the tapering thing, and now I was supposed to do for another two weeks. I want to come back to eat and drink and sleep and... <laughs> <laughs> so it was difficult to know. You train more, you don't train more, you taper, you don't taper. It was kind of a... Plus, your mental game was fun, totally. I mean, uh, mine was. And it was funny because Suzanne and Taylor and I had just got there. I know that was going to tell the mm -hmm. goes into the meeting. Mm -hmm. I sent her a text that said, turn around and don't come back. <laughs> she sends back, liar, liar, a picture of a pair of pants. And, and a piece of a <laughs> <eye. laughs> <laughs> I, I am not lying. <laughs> turn around and go home. They told us you either leave now or leave in the morning. They were very polite and very well. We got good news, but we got some bad news. The good news is we would like to come back in two weeks. The bad news is we would really like to leave now. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> or at first light in the morning. I was, I was like, so ready that They're time. like, we're getting some crab cakes before we go. <laughs> well, I think uh, Dink and Suzanne were both signed up for, right? Yeah. So that, that put a month away from a lot of folks. Goes, Change your flight. Cancel your flight. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right, so I'm, I'm actually next with uh, Muskoka. Uh, I did uh, Muskoka, Canada this year. You're not going to talk about Hawaii? Well, I'm not Are you kidding? We'll talk about that at some point. Are you kidding? That's actually. Let's go, baby! Who wants to hear about that? Oh. Well, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you about. You know, there's a lot of stupid races, but Muskoka, I was a freaking idiot uh -huh. getting prepared for it. And I, I, I blame really a Doug Tinkham for that. Because, uh, it's Doug's and if you know, that's Doug's fault. Uh, Doug and I did uh, Boulder last year. I'm ready for people. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, he took me some shots out there that I think I'm still feeling the effects for. <laughs> so, yeah, they have some things that are legal out there that aren't yet legal in Alabama. So, but for that, I would be thinking clearly. Uh, so this year, uh, 2015, we started the year um, thinking about what races we were going to do. And, and Doug and I, before he started going to law school, signed up for Muskoka in Canada. You know, Dawn and I and Doug went out there at the Boulder last year, a great road trip, a lot of fun. And so me and my buddy Doug were going to do another race. And uh, they, he went to law school and he, he bailed on me. <laughs> Doug is one of those people that are, he's really anal. I mean, he's one of those that he will know everything about the race, every, every little fact about how far this is and how high this is. I'm not that way. I am absolutely the opposite. You know, I just sign up and now let's go to it. So I, I'm reading the description of Muskoka and it says um, 2,200 feet of climbing, I think. And, I, and by that time, you know, I'm preparing for the race, dug his bell, you know, I get my, my legacy entry into Kona. And so, you know, I'm not really thinking about Muskoka, but my idea was, well, let's just go do the race, man. Let's just go do an Ironman race. You know, we'll go through like a, a long training day. You know, it's just, it's just not him, man. Shit, just do it. You know, just go up for a vacation. And that's what we were going to do, uh, me and Don. So we were just going to go up and do a race. And do it about 70%, you know, and just knock it out and have a good vacation. So we get up there and we start driving the course as we usually do, and it's a two-looper. And I'm driving, and it says 2,200 feet, and I'm thinking, during the drive, I'm thinking, crap, this is pretty fucking hilly. I mean, this is, 2,200 feet, it's, it's hilly. I mean, and you know, you're, you're coming up over some hills, and you're going down, and I'm thinking, well, okay. So this, and we didn't drive the whole course, and so I'm thinking, well, this is just the really hilly part of the course. <laughs> and so we, we uh, didn't drive it all, and so on race day, uh, the swim, I had a pretty good, decent swim. I'm an average swimmer, but I had a good swim. Uh, get out on the bike, and within about 20 miles, hell, I'm beat. I'm tired. And as it turns out, the 2,200 feet of climbing, I thought, and 2,200 feet is uh, a little more than Florida. So you think it's, and the whole reason I picked the race, I thought, fuck, it's flat. I'll just go up there and do a training day, you know, and just have a vacation. The 2,200 feet of, of climbing, turns out that was meters. <laughs> so as, as it turns out, uh, Muskoka was 7,300 feet. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, it was a brutal freaking day of climbing. So, and, but I didn't know this on race day. <laughs> so I'm on my first loop of the, of the bike ride, and uh, I come up, and, and there's just hill after hill after hill. And I come through the first lap, and I said, fuck, I'm done. I can't do it. I mean, what? I have no training whatsoever. None. My fitness is shit. I'm not going to make the race. And so I, I you know, I'm, I'm stopping at the aid stations and I'm eating on the bike. I stop and I'm eating. I'm saying, what? Is everybody else tired? It's nobody. And they're just pedaling on. I said, oh, fuck, I'll go. All right. So we go for the second loop and uh, I started dropping my, my chain on my bike. And so on the derailer, when I would go on these freaking climbs, I would go down to the, 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 the uh, small uh, gear in front, it would drop the chain. So about at mile 70, I said, screw it. I'm not going in the low chain. I'm going big gear the whole way. <laughs> 
So I'm just grinding up these hills, you know, just grinding and grinding. Of course, that tears my knees up. You know, I'm, I got chronic knee problems. So I uh, get all the way through, you know, the bike and get in transition, start running. And uh, the run, as usual for me, is just uh, beating. And so I go the first four miles and I'm down and I go all through the run, walk, then of the marathon. And uh, the next day I finish and I forget it was a horrible finish. Uh, it was a bad finish. Yeah, uh, felt like my knee. My knees were really bad. It was a finish. All along, it, it was finished. It was finished. So the next day, yeah, it's you know I'm beating myself up, and, and again, you know, five weeks later, and, and the whole race was I'm going to do this at seventy percent. Okay, I'm just going easy. I'm just going easy because five weeks later I got Kona. So you know I'm, I'm going to do this at seventy percent. Take it easy, an easy day, just a little vacation up north. And uh, I come off that race, and I'm, I'm, I'm hurting. I really am. My knees are, are really hurting. My knees are swollen up, and uh, we have about 2,000 feet of climbing on the run, you know. And so it, it was a tough course, beautiful course. And if you want to do one with the knowledge that it's going to be a, a little bit tougher, go do it. It's a great vacation. And so, uh, yeah, the next day, I'm talking to people and, uh, and a typical idiot American saying, yeah, God, that was tough. That was a tough bike, 2,000 feet, I can't believe it. And they said, uh, no sir, that was, that was me. <laughs> so I, I, I looked today and uh, just to give you an idea, the uh, 7,400 feet of climb in Muskoka, tougher than St. George, tougher than Lake Placid, tougher than Wisconsin, Las Colas, <laughs> Kona, all these races besides Tahoe, it's the toughest bike course there is. And so I think the mental part uh, for me, the mental part of a race, when I get done is when I get beat. And this is one of those races where I was just beat. And so I'm, I'm glad that I finished it. Um, it is a beautiful course. We had a lot of fun up there. Uh, but mentally, you just got to get prepared. And it really is one of those I am races in one where you've got to get prepared for the course. And uh, I slack on that a little bit. Yeah, if you would have been with me, then uh, then I would have done much better. Of course, we would have partied pretty hard, but uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, one thing you know, like Maureen says, anybody can do these things. Hell, we know that. We've done them now. So all we got to do is get mentally right to do it. All right, so that's, that's Muskoka. Any questions about Muskoka? All right. How far how was it from Muskoka to Kona? How many weeks? Five weeks. How cold was it? So Muskoka was supposed to be cool, and it was the heat wave. Yeah, it was. You know, the mornings were great, but the afternoon was quite It it was the try gods, of course, saying, "Oh, you know, heat, heat, more heat." You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The big uke? What? The big what? The uke? Come on up. <laughs> oh, the the biker. <laughs> well, I'm Eric. I'm going to tell you about a race that we didn't do. Um, I'm going to tell you about one of the worst days of my life ever. And getting ready for Iron Man Canada, which didn't happen. That's a that's a long story. So I'm in France, and we're in the Pyrenees, and I'm helping my partners get ready for Kona. And this is really cool because these guys all race and represent their countries. They're sub five hour bikers. They're sub three hour marathon runners, and I'm going to go ride with them to the Tourmalet. And if you, who watches the Tour de France? Hey, right here. We've seen the Tourmalet. We know there's this big, epic, nasty thing. So we decide that we're going to ride three or four mountains before we hit the Tourmalet. <laughs> this sounds awesome. After a couple <laughs> bottles of wine at dinner the night before, Freaking incredible. <laughs> Boom! I like you. Bring it on. Yeah. I'm all there. So we start off. And the first part of the climb, I don't ride because I have a baby in the back seat. It's not mine. And I'm driving this English van. 
and the English van goes on the right side of the road, but it's just weird through the Pyrenees with someone else's baby because they're right. Okay, so we've got everything that's bad. The gear shifter is still in the center, right? Oh, oh, oh. Wrong hand. Oh, God. Baby in the back. Baby in the back. <laughs> and we're doing this. Okay, so this is 90 minutes of Eric with Jesus. I'm talking to God the whole time. I just want the baby to keep sleeping. I want to sleep. So we get up there and we stop. And the baby's still asleep. Now, evidently, there's a pe bunch of people in France right now that know there's a crazy American that stands outside with the baby thing at the top of a mountain, swinging and singing, swing low. Okay, so finally I get out of this and we go and do a couple other passes. Absolute. It was beautiful. It's gorgeous. I mean, the, all the roads are open. But then we get down to the base of the Tourmalet, and it's 94 degrees. Oh my gosh. At the bottom. Okay. Fair enough. We start our climb. Now, mind you, the guy that I'm riding with is much more svelte. <laughs> much more powerful, so he is therefore much more faster. -er. <laughs> but I know where I'm going because I've been to the top of the turbo. I've been to the terminal. I haven't gone up this side, but I knew that when we got to the top, we came down. So we start the ride, and I'm by myself because nobody else is riding up this side. This should have been Eric's first clue that this day is going to suck. <laughs> And I'm riding, and it's about a 30K ride, so I'm about an hour climbing. It was beautiful, and it wasn't really bad yet. I was a little thirsty, and I'd already stopped and tried to get whatever water I could, and realized water was getting bad. Well, I go for about another 20 minutes, and a storm system comes through. <laughs> now, this is not a storm system that says, oh, it's going to rain on you. No, it says, it's 94 now. Let's make it 40. Oh, my God. <laughs> And I have 94 degree clothes on. <laughs> so at this point, I'm back with Jesus again. <laughs> and we're having a talk because I start to get cold. And I know there's a couple of us in here that don't like cold. We don't do well in cold. It's horrible. So we're going along. And I realize I haven't seen a human for quite a while. I'm going up. I know the road. That, thank God I looked at the map. Know the road can't go any further. And I knew that I have to get to the top. I have to go to the highest point there is and come back down another 30k before I'm ever, ever going to be warm again. So I went to the back. black, black, black place. I was in the pink <laughs> cave. I decorated it. I had a. <laughs> bed of nails, I was laying on it, I mean, the Bee Gees were playing, I was staring the whole last with the strobe light, and the guy from the Silence of the Lamb was in there talking to me, it puts the lotion on his skin, I mean, this is how bad my life is at this point. Finally, after an eternity, I hit the top. I was like, okay, this is half the problem, I don't have to climb anymore, it's not going to hurt so bad, then I realized there's ice. Oh, no, no. all over me and my gloves. And I have my summer clothes on. Well, I have some gloves because I thought the little thin gloves would be really warm. Realizing we have to do a 30K descent. Oh, my God. And this is like this. Okay. How many people have ever tried squeezing their brakes when their hands are frozen? Oh, my God. <laughs> This is the most awesome thing ever. It took me a month to get the bicycle seat out of my butt. I was coming down the hill. So we go through this. So the climb, it was, you know, it was, being in the black place wasn't so bad. Coming down is, you're just, oh my God. So this is like the worst day on earth. I've already bonked. I've gone to the black place, silence of the lambs. We have all this. I get down, we finally make it to this little village, and I see my buddy. I said, dude, 
I'm in a bad way. And some of you guys have met Graham before. Oh, he's also good, mate. You know, we've got another 30K. We're going to climb up Colvis Bend, do the descent. And, you know, another 30K from there. We'll be back home. No worries. I said, Graham, I'm done. <laughs> right, it's fine. We're going to go back down here, 30K. You can go up Colvis Bend. Okay, so you go from the pancake to the I hate you cake. Uh, uh, now, do you know how fast you can ride in the I hate you cake? <laughs> when we were over there, I had done this climb, Cold Espen, we see it on the tour as well. I'd done it like eight times before we ever got there. According to Strava, when I finally got to that point, I shattered my best time by six minutes. <laughs> I was so mad, thinking I had to go back up and back down. Now, the moral of the story is a little anger is going to get you a long way. We got back down to the bottom, and they were waiting for me, and they had pizza. <laughs> yes. But that will go down as one of the worst that I thought I was going to die. When I got to the top of the terminal A, there was a guy up there, that his motorcycle wouldn't go anymore. He was looking at me, you better ride your bike down <laughs> well, I'm not going to sit up here with you. I mean, <laughs> this guy's got all these motorcycle clothes. So, yeah, back down. So, the story of the worst day of my life cycling this year, getting ready for Ironman Canada. But it was really fun when it was all over. It was brilliant, like five days later. You know, for 48 hours, we didn't talk about it because I was still kind of smaller <laughs> and raw. You know, but it gets better. So, that is my most epic story of the year for training for Ironman. Death on Terminal A. I like it. <laughs> so, uh, Melissa, did you run down the chute at uh, Arizona? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did anyone not run down the chute in their Ironman race? Oh, yeah. So, what happens is you got a sucky day, but somehow that last 100 yards or 150 <laughs> yards is like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was there ice when you were going back down? Was there actual, I mean, like, when you're oh, trying to hold... on both sides of the road. Because the only thing I had to compare that to was, I mean, this is ridiculous, but like the, the, um, what is that, what is that, um, race, what, that ride we do on, in August, um, for, um... Summer Sizzler, when there's like that... Oh, yeah. When we ride down that big hill, remember where you got off and... We ride, I'm, I'm holding down my brakes. What is that hill we get right down? Yeah. Park, skyline. Skyline. Yeah. skyline. It's a big skyline. Yeah, yeah. so skyline. when you're right, I'm literally holding on my brakes and I'm going like, I'm sliding down there. Like, if you're, when, I'm assuming it's way steeper. I'm assuming there's like, when you're go, flying down there, like, is there ice and hat? There wasn't ice at the time. The road was still warm enough, but um, since it had been so hot during the day, the snow melt, the roads were wet, so you're getting all this nice cold water right up your bum. All I remember but is, like, on Skyline, I'm holding my brakes as far. Maybe I need to have my brakes adjusted. It's uh, 40 degrees there and 100 degrees That's there. That's what I'm like, 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 I'm holding my brakes yes. as hard as I yeah. can, and I'm sliding straight all down right. the mountain. All right, next yeah. presenter, Dick Taylor. Yeah. Well, one thing Dana didn't say is I did tell her that was a good goal. I'm just not used to people trying to knock hours off their PRs rather than minutes. You know, minutes make sense, hours does not make sense. I don't see you knock three more hours off. <laughs> just kind of crazy. But uh, and, and I did tell you that was a good goal, and I'm glad you read it. Um, I, I put everything, I put all my thoughts about what I just did on the Ironman Grand Slam on paper so y'all can just go read it. So I'm going to sit here and talk about it. If you really want to read it, it's long. It's, it's, it's long. Great. It's about 10,000 words and it's pretty detailed. Um, it was, you know, it was, I really trained for Chattanooga. And I, fig I figured that was my only chance to actually have, have a decent race would be Chattanooga because I can't swim and it's a downriver swim. And that swim was actually short too, so it really made things really nice. Um, and the bike's super fast, there's no wind and all that good stuff. But how it, you know how wonderful it feels to finish an Ironman, right? Well, each time I finished an Ironman, I could not feel that wonderful. 
because I knew two weeks later I'd be doing another one. <laughs> Except for Maryland, I was a little disappointed that that got canceled because I already had it in my mind that I was going to be doing two Ironmans in one week. I wanted to do that <laughs> because it was Sunday to Saturday. So I was a little disappointed there, but then my body was more thankful because I got that week of recovery. Um, so it, each time I would finish one, it worked out good. I was just doing an Ironman every other week. And I would, um, you know, there was lots of surprises. I knew I would gradually get tireder and tireder, which was no doubt, even when we were in Louisville, I wasn't expecting it to be that hilly. And I was like, damn, I, I can't believe I'm back out here on the bike again for 112. <laughs> and, but the run was fabulous. Louisville was probably the best weather. For me, out of the four that I did, because, Is that huh? Yeah, yeah, and then of course, <laughs> the Louisville runs flat too. It was a, if you're not much of a runner, Louisville's the course to do, and the weather's great there since they moved it to October. Uh, and the and it was the only wetsuit legal one I did out of the four. Everything else, we were barely missing wetsuit. Three of the races were 77 degrees, yeah. which I figured, you know, doing four, I needed to make it as hard as possible. Um, I did the four because a, turning 50 was just an excuse to go do a bunch of Ironmans to me. Um, I, I needed the challenge and I thought it would be fun and it'd be an adventure and I did it for personal reasons. I just, you know how it is, I had just personal reasons I wanted to do it and I thought it would be fun. But it was kind of weird finishing Ironmans and not being finished. You know, in my mind it was not finished every time I did one. And then me and Eric went down to Claremont, which was the one I did two years ago, and I knew it would be tough. And a friend of mine sent me a message, you know they changed the bike course. It's got 5,600 feet climb now. And I was like, I was like you, I hadn't been training on hills, not that much. And it was 90 degrees, and you know, it was just not fun from start to end. That race is not fun. Whenever I see anybody wearing a GFT, G, what is it, Great Floridian T-shirt, I'm like, dude, you're a different kind of person. Because that you want some challenge besides like Lake Tahoe, go do Great Floridian. It's hot as hell, and it's just, it's just rough. It's, the run's not that bad. Just, um, and I was glad to get to Panama City because um, I'd never done the ocean swim Ironman yet. That's another thing I liked about doing all four. I wanted to get in my mind. I know finishing Ironman, you're an Ironman, but in my mind, I still wasn't an Ironman. I felt like. If I could do all four of these at once, then maybe, just maybe, I'm actually an Ironman. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Well, and, and, that, and again, it was all personal. Because I was like, well, Chattanooga's down river. Well, that don't count. Um, <laughs> you know, Louisville, we wore a wetsuit. Well, that don't count. Um, great for it in, I will not question. <laughs> I will not question anything about it. And then, and then Panama City's the ocean swim, and that, for me, I was worried about throwing up because it's salt water and wavy, and, and it wasn't wetsuit legal for the freaking first time ever, and the course was long. It looked long, and it was long. Yeah. It was long, 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 and I was like, I just need more challenges, and uh, I had, by the time I got to Panama City, I was very tired, and uh, just, I got on the bike, and I knew it was a fast course. So I pushed the best I could. It was still my second fast bike I've ever done was at Panama City, but that course is flat. But then when I got to the run, it was, I wasn't feeling great the first loop, but then a negative split the second half marathon of 15 minutes, and I actually felt better at the end of Panama City than any of the four, because wow. I think it's because I knew I was done. That was the only race that I finished, got something to eat, took a shower, and went to the bar. <laughs> it was the only one. The rest of them, I would be like, I got to go home. I got to start getting ready for the next one. And I, I only took off one day after each event. And then I would be back to training because I just couldn't. I couldn't be happy until I got to that finish line in Panama City. And I was also worried. Remember, Eric Broyles told that story about his bicycle ride? Mm -hmm. He said he was averaging a flat every 400 miles. Uh, I did the math, and I'm like, I'm going to have a flat. And, <laughs> <I'm gonna have laughs> a <laughs> and I did not have a flat, but um, like Parker in Great Floridian, when you're going up hills like this, I dropped a chain. It was the first time I ever came off a bike here in Ironman because my chain came off because the hills were so freaking steep that you'd have to gear down, and you were just more likely to drop a chain. 
And that was the first time I'd ever even rode the small ring in a, in a race, was at a Great Floridian. Jeez. You know, even at Louisville, I never came out of the big ring. I mean, it was beautiful. <laughs> but Great Floridian, I spent 50% of my time in the Grand Year, I would say, something about like that. It was that bad. But anyway, that was, that was my little Ironman grass line. I'm not going to do it again. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to focus on... Chattanooga for next year. I'm already registered because that race suits me good and maybe try to get another PR before I get too old. Did I go over my time? You were great. So we uh, we did the great we did the great Floridian uh, a couple of years ago in a very tough course. And I did it with a friend of mine. I did it with Rick Reif. Uh, he was down there and did it with, uh, well, I'm not going to mention his name because he's the <laughs> subject of, of what I'm going to tell you. So what I was going to do is just do the Great Floridian, the swim and the bike, and just meet up with this friend of mine who we were just going to run walk it because he had the Florida Ironman a week later or so, or yeah, I think it was the week later. It might, it might have been two weeks, but I think it was the week later. And so we're not mentioning any names because <laughs> there's still a statute of limitations. All right. So so I wait in transition off the bike. I wait for my friend, and I'll just call him uh, Mike Sparks. <laughs> uh, so we're in transition, and uh, we start running, and he's about three miles in, and we're just run walking. But he's he's got to really pace himself because. Again, a week later, he's doing Ironman Florida. So he starts getting this headache, and he says, man, it's just pounding me, Parker. It's just pounding. Man, my skull is just breaking. And so he pulls out of his out of his running gear, he pulls out this bag of pills. I mean, it's blues and greens and yellows, and you'd think he would just, you know, like, pick. Oh, no. He, he went in there deep and just grabbed. <laughs> and he was just eating pills for like 15 miles. I mean, I was, I was next to someone who was, who was I thought I was going to overdose. <laughs> but we were running. And I was like, well, hell, if we can run, let's go. But, so finally, about 15 miles, he's Parker, my headache won't stop. And about that time, I look up, I said, Mike, it's dark and you got sunglasses on. He said, yeah, let me take those off. And he takes them off. He says, oh, hell, that feels bad. <laughs> and what it was, he had really tight sunglasses on that were pressing against his skull. And I thought, you know, those 14, 15 pills you ate didn't help. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, we finished the uh, great Floridian. Uh, but anyway, that's another story. You know, they changed that bike course since you did. It was freaking hilly. Then. They changed it. I did two years ago, and I remember it not being that bad, but yeah. it was bad. Now. Yeah. You yeah. go to Sugar Hill three times now. We yeah, it was. Three times? That was a very, very yeah. tough bike. And the traffic ain't that great control either. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you'd almost have to stop at traffic lights and stuff because yeah. the traffic was so heavy on some. I was just first miles. Miles. It was scary. Yeah. And I, I think the problem with the Great Floridian uh, is that it's a smaller event. And I'd get out there on the bike. I was out on the bike, and I'd go, hell, I'm off course. There's, I nobody, I was lost there's nobody else around. You know, I'm off, and, and you're on the course. It's just a small crowd. Yeah. 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 Kelly, yeah. you're up. <laughs> All right, well, thank you all for inviting me. This is great. I can't decide if I'm going to go the liar route or the beggar route. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I'm going I'm to go bragger route. Uh, that might remind me a little bit. And, and he, he was lying about the downriver swim being short in Chattanooga. That is not true. And there is wind out there. I am certain of it because I felt it. Um, but it was pushing me, so it felt really good. Um, I, I have to go back a little bit. So I, I started training for this. You know, you, my son and I went to Chattanooga last year. He's 10. Uh, he's 11 now. He's 10 then. We volunteered, had a great time, got swept up into the emotion, and so I signed up the next morning. Um, and um, and I didn't I mean I did that on purpose because I didn't get in. You know that first year that you had like you know thirty seconds to get in or whatever. But anyway, so I've been doing this for three years. I, I've never ridden at this point past twenty five miles on the bike. I've done one, two marathons at this. No, only one marathon at that point. Um, but I had done Mountain Mist. And I figure if you can do that, you can do anything. <laughs> and and, and this, that's going to play into my story a little bit. So um, 
fast forward, I'm training pretty well, and then I hit the middle of the summer, and I have some things happen that just get me way off my game. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm having, I had some stuff at work happen. I had some stuff in my personal life happen. I just say, I'm out. I, I'm done. I, I'm not going to train for that. I just don't have time for this. i got to focus on other things that are more important. So fast forward six weeks. I've done nothing. Zero. <laughs> Absolutely not. I did not run. I did not bike. I did not swim. Not a single day. I went to the Huntsville Sprint because my son was doing it. He's 11 now. And I see Greg. And I was like, man, I'm out. He's like, man, wait, yeah, you're, you're fired. You're getting ready. No, I'm not. I'm out. He's like, what do you mean you're out? I'm out. He's like, you already paid your money, right? And I said, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you just go try? And I'm like, yeah. That, I mean, that was the first time in six weeks that I thought, maybe, maybe I will. So David, my son, does the race, and I get all fired up again. I'm like, man, I got I to gotta do this. I can do it. I can do it. So I go ride my bike that day, 25 miles, and I swim a mile that day, which was a Saturday. And I decide, all right, well, I got six weeks. Maybe five weeks at that point. Five weeks at that point. And I still have never ridden past, I rode 50 miles one time with Dana before that, one time. And I thought, hmm, let me go see if I can ride 50. So that Friday, I rode 25 that day. That Friday, I called Dana. I was like, hey, when are you riding? So I had nobody to ride with. And she said, I'm going to ride Friday morning. So I rode Friday morning, 50 miles. I was like, well, that's not too bad. When are you going to ride again? And I think the next week. Yeah, yeah. And, and how far? i got to go farther. I mean, can we do 75? Yes. <laughs> so we get out there, and we're riding and riding, and she's like, you've done Mountain Mist, right? And I'm like, yeah, I've done it twice. And, I, and she's like, if you can do that, you can do anything. I said, I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> I totally agree with that. I mean, at this point, I'm not running yet. I'm like, I'm going to swim, and I'm going to bike. Because I can run. I mean, I know if I can get to the run, I can run. I'm not worried about that. The last time I had ran past six miles, no, I take that back. Yeah, past six miles was Mountain Mist. <laughs> I had not run past six miles. Now, I did a couple of Olympics, you know, through the summer. By the way, I do have one story that, that will somewhat compare to your, your freezing cold one. And it is your race. Three hours ago, where I came into transition, and my hands were just like the Kung Fu grip when I was a kid. And I sat down on the ground, and I don't know who was, there was a lady in transition, and, and I said, I can't take my shoes off. I cannot do it. I bought my feet. Hey, good for you. No one helped She said, I will take them off. And I said, but I can't put my running shoes on. And she put them on and tied them for me. And I ran out. So just for the record, it was brutal. I had never been, in, I've never ridden in, in anything that cold in my life. But, but anyway, so, so back to my story. So that day that we were doing 75, I made it 68. Dana knew that I was dying. We, we got like halfway back up Bailey Cove. I pulled into my, I go to church right over here at Mayfair. I pulled in and I called my wife and I said, you have to come and get me. I, I, and I lived, I mean, like half a, well, one, one mile from Mayfair. I was like, I'm not climbing another hill. I don't care if it's got 100 feet of climb. I can't do it. And I mean, I'm really starting to go, hmm, I don't know about this. Hmm. Well, like a week later, I was up, I was up in Newmarket, Tennessee. I mean, now Alabama. And I thought, I wonder how far it is from home. I had my bike. And, and so I made this course. And I, I rode 88 miles. All over into, you know, New Hope and all that in there. And back up here. And, I, and it, the wind was right in my face. I thought, man, if I, can, if I can do 88 miles, I can do this race. So let me get to my, I'm going to get to the race day now. I never ran more than six miles. But thank you, Greg, for telling me that I could do it. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> For telling me that I could do it. So I get to race that. I get up that morning. I, I'm, I'm sort of all over the place too. I, I'm not real, you know, I'm not real regimented like, you know, you said you're not either. I, I'm not either. So I get up. I go downstairs. I pound two cups of coffee. Go clean my system out. You know, I get back and I eat probably five of those 
really great little, you know, um, sort of like the, the, the uh, little turnovers that you can get. You know, they get like, you know, really good berry kind of stuff in there. So I eat like five of those. Give me another cup of coffee and I go down. Everything's good. So I run into this kid that lived three houses down from me in Tuscaloosa. I grew up in Tuscaloosa. Um, hadn't seen him in 40 years. Uh, well, maybe 35. And he's got like on this USA, you know, name on the front, you know, and all this stuff. And so, and he's got a $12,000 bike. And I'm like, oh man, what is Derek Wilson doing here? So we get out, I do the swim in like an hour and 10 minutes, and, and, I, and I've been swimming, I knew I could probably do, I probably, probably could do that. It was down river, um, but I'm not, I'm not buying in there with it, it was short. Um, so I get on the bike, and the first lap, I mean, dude, I smoked it. Like 20 miles an hour on the first, you know, 25 miles, and then 22 miles an hour on the second. I've never done that in my life. But my, my goal was to stop. I had packed two Coca-Colas, four Reese's peanut butter cups, and two <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So I, I roll into that little town, everybody's going crazy. I hop off my bike, and there's a guy that works here standing there. He's like, you know, he's like this close to me. And I'm like, man, I know you from Huntsville. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's talking. And I pop over those cokes, and I pound them down, and I eat those Reese's. Well, I, 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 Stuck one in my back pocket. I pounded one. I ate those Reese's peanut butter cups, and I rolled out of there drinking a Coke. Everybody was laughing at me, like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I'm drinking a Coke. <laughs> I'm having fun, you know." And so I, I rolled the second half. Um, ended up at like 18 miles an hour, which was right where I thought I could, you know, probably do it. I mean, I, the, you know, my second little loop was much slower because I stopped and got off the bike. So I get into the run, and I run into this guy a week before the race, and he said, hey, I did. I think you should do a run walk. And I, I don't like to walk. I can't stand to walk. It drives me crazy, but I do hit walls when I walk, and it makes me think I need to keep walking. So I did a six on one, six one, six one, six one. He goes, if you'll do it, you'll pass a ton of people in the second half of the race. And I totally did. I passed a ton of people, and it just made me get faster and faster. And I ran into all kinds of people from Huntsville that I didn't even really know, but they had on, you know, Fleet Feet Huntsville. Man, you're from Huntsville. Who are you? We get to talking. And so, I, you know, I had no expectation, and I didn't try to kill myself, and it just worked. And I ended up doing a 12 hours and 40 minutes. Wow. Thank you all for letting me tell that. No one else understands in my life, no one else. So thank y'all for letting me do that. Great job. Yes, it did. Absolutely. Uh, if you can do that, you can do anything. I'm certain Mike Sparks has a, a, a prescription for everything I talked about. <laughs> I'm, sure I'm sure he's got a prescription for all that. You couldn't get him here to No, 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 no. no, no. He, he's in great health. Yeah. 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 That would be great. Yeah. Skittles. Yeah, I'm not sure they were Skittles. Yeah. 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 Tina, I am Chad. Come on up. With a K. Uh, hello, everyone. I don't know if I met y'all. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, I was actually thinking of just kind of backing up to, well, you know, I've done a few Ironmans prior to this. I did Wisconsin 2013. I was in the military and retired last June. Well, I had signed up for not only one, but two Ironmans in, I wasn't going to do both, by the way. I signed up for, what's the one that's a really cold swim in July? It's not Coeur d'Alene, it's the other one, June, July. It's a hilly one, and that's why I wanted to do Lake it, but Plastic. it's like, Lake which one? Lake Placid? Lake Placid? No, no, no. It's no? over in, um, I can't think of it right now. Is it Coeur d'Alene still? It's, oh, then I guess that's fine. Well, anyway, I thought 55 degrees in the water, I'm not doing it. So, Lake Placid, we're crazy. You're cra you guys that do this, I probably would have quit. Melissa, I probably would have quit. So, I'm really not. I'm a wimp. So, anyway, I signed up for Coeur d'Alene. I was still kind of going through what I wanted to do when I left the military, and I wasn't sure about the timing of the job and all that. So, then I transferred to Louisville. Well, then I was wanting to be a cop. I thought that was the thing I wanted to do. So then I, I just didn't do either Ironman, and I lost like $1,000. So that's my story about that. So I'm in the police academy last year, and uh, 
Chattanooga happened and I was all psyched up. You know, I thought, wow, that'd be awesome to do it. But I knew when I, in 2013, when I was driving Wisconsin, I was watching that you said it closed in 30 seconds, whoever said that, it was crashing, it was hilarious actually. So I thought, well, if it's open in a day or two, I don't know, I waited actually a day or two, but I thought if it's open, I'll sign up. So I did. Still being a cop, still, you know, I lasted until about July, and I said, or June or July, and I said, this thing is not for me because I didn't want to work that hard anymore. Um, <laughs> because it really was interfering with my training. And, and you were talking about, you know, you have life issues and you stop training. If I stopped training, I really would have life issues because that's all I do with life. So. Anyway, so I, you know, I, of course I have a coach, uh, he's Scott Jones, he's out of Colorado, he's a real good friend of mine, I knew him in the Navy, I used to race for the military. Um, so doing my training, um, when I started working here, I was blessed to meet, you know, Dink, I heard about Dink and all that, but we started training with Dink, and, and um, I actually do a lot of training alone, though. I mean, I train with some of the Spring City, like Emmett and, uh, you know, John Ortiz and all that, I, I do a lot of that in the, you know, the group rides throughout the early part of the, the spring and stuff, but once I get closer to Ironman, I usually train alone, but actually I was training with Dink a lot because, you know, we were dropping and, and uh, getting on my tri bike. So, anyway, so Chattanooga was a great race. I recommend it to anybody. I think for a first time, especially um, the swim, I loved it because, like other people, I'm not a swimmer. I mean, I, I've gotten better, but when I first did Conan, I just swam like an hour and a half, so I mean, now I did a 104 in Chattanooga. That was my PR. I was like, wow, you know, I really don't swim that fast. It just pushed me, um, as it did all of us. Uh, you know, I really didn't have any, you know, I've, like I said, I've done some Ironmans and I've had those, those times on the run, especially where you're just like, what am I doing? This sucks. I have this much more, you know, I did the tough man and I ran, started too fast. And, you know, I had that, that black, you know, where you just get in that moment. But, um, Chattanooga, the, the swim went good. Um, the, the bike, I really, you know, somebody mentioned how fast it was. It was crazy fast. I mean, I just, I, I started out a little bit conservative because my coach as well as I always talk to Ding about that because I, I think I'm just going to go fast and that you know I'm going to keep going fast and that's why I'm in the tough man my run kind of faded but um, I just really had a really good bike and I got on the run and I, I had to hold myself back because running like other people that's my thing and I get out there like when I've done Kona before I'll be running like 7, 7, 30 to first I can't do that that's not realistic you know so I was holding back the worst part of the run for me was on the greenway you know where it's like the greenway that part was horrible because it, it was just so boring there was nobody there and I felt like I was going you know slow and it, I don't know if it was a false flat or if it was just but um, but I love heels I mean I just really love heels so you know because what goes up must come down. And, uh, <laughs> so um, the other thing, nutrition-wise, I know a lot of people talk about all the, you know, of course this is, I've done some Ironmans. I couldn't do the, the Coke and the, you know, the candy bars and all that. And my coach, this is the other funny thing, Tuesday before the race, which is on Sunday, my coach says, well, use Carbo Pro. And I've never heard of Carbo Pro. I know you're not supposed to change. I've always, the last some four or five Ironmans, I've just used gels the whole race. So he's like, just use Carbo Pro. And I'm like, on the bike. And I'm like... I can't do this, so I'm freaking out, Dink. I'm telling tell Dink, listen, yeah, I was like freaking out. I can't do this. So he calls me up and he calls me down because he qualifies for Kona every year. I mean, he did it this year, he's doing it next year. So I trusted him and it, it worked out perfectly. I really, I mean, I was just sipping like an Ivy, like he said. You know, Melissa mentioned, so you know, I had a little bit left when I was done on the bike and on the run, I used about maybe three gels. He said, don't drink Coke until the second half because. I love to just guzzle, you know, Coke and everything on, on the run. And, and the other thing I want to say real quick is the, the walk running, there's nothing wrong with that. When I did Louisville in 2010, it was like 90 degrees, 100% humidity. I had a really good run. And about halfway through the run, every eight station I was walking through. So there's nothing. I used to think, like somebody mentioned, I used to think if I stopped and walked, I would, I would be done. Through the, but, through the eight stations? Yeah, that's what I would do. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's considered a run wall. Yeah. You walk your yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, Colin would be Fraser did it. Not you. Yeah. Those pussies. <laughs> <laughs> walk oh, through I the eight stage. Yeah. So, anyway, it was a, uh, uh, it was a great race. That's what I did too. Though. Yeah, right. I right. run the first yeah. loop and then walk through the eight stage. Uh, uh, the yeah. other really cool thing was I got, I'm on the run and I see my coach, my very first coach from Hawaii. He's like, hey, Tina. He still, he still lives in Hawaii, but his daughter was there doing it. And I'm like, oh my God. And, and I was so excited. That was just so cool. So it was a great race. I will do it again. Um, I'm not doing it again next year, of course, but um, yeah, it was a good race. So. Oh, we should finish up. Didn't you finish like this? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So good. Carbo Pro is the back of the back. Just for the record, I cry through the uh, aid stations. <laughs> 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 motorcycles, but that doesn't really count, um, other than crashing and hurting more stuff. And then four years ago, I thought, I've, you know, I'm, I've gained weight, I'm upset, I need to do something. So Thanksgiving four years ago, I started trying to run. I could not run a 15-minute mile. I could not do more than one mile. I was too embarrassed to even sign up for the No Boundaries program. So. I did a, uh, a group at UAH was doing a run walk thing, so I did that. And so fast forward, went through training, training for my first marathon two years later, I broke my pelvis with a stress fracture. Um, still tried to do the marathon, made it 18 miles before the cramp. Um, and then that spring, I thought, well, I'm gonna do the half marathon training program. So I started doing that, and some crazy ladies in that group were training for 70.3. <laughs> and I'm looking at these people, and I'm thinking, well, I can run better than them, and I could barely walk, so <laughs> I can do 70.3. Uh, no, I can't. I can't bike. My knees won't let me bike. I could do a mile on a bike, and my knees would start hurting. And they kept convincing me, Karen and Jill and Donna and Stephanie, <laughs> And they're just like trying to twist my arm. You can do this. You, you need to do a triathlon. You can't do it. So we were out doing speed work one evening and running along the greenway. And Dink's running with me. And we're, I started asking about triathlons. And he's, he's telling me what he's doing for training. He probably doesn't even remember it. But he talked about swimming. And I, I knew I could swim. That wasn't a problem. I've been swimming all my life. Like, I just can't do the bike. Um, but they, they talked me into signing up for Tri 101. And I found a bike on Craigslist that ended up being owned by a co-worker's wife. And I got that, and I started riding around the sportsplex in Athens, and thought, I like this. So I bought a, a really nice Tri bike off of eBay, and decided to go do my first uh, sprint triathlon two weeks after Tri 101 started. <laughs> and Rick said, what are you doing here? I said, well, I think I'm going to do a triathlon. Uh, walked up the hills because I had never ridden more than five miles in a flat parking lot. <laughs> anyway, uh, so I kind of just sort of stumbled through triathlons last year, and Parker had the Southeastern Triathlon Series that, I don't know, only a few people seem to pay any attention to, but I, it's getting close to the end of the year, and I'm like, well, I'm on top of my age group, but you have to do a 70.3 to win. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I can do a 70.3. Yeah, maybe I can. I just have to finish it. So I signed up for um, Goose Pond, and I finished it in a little less than eight hours. And I was like, well, I'm still alive. I finished that. That was good. And at that point, even though I thought there's no way, I thought 70.3 was just crazy and Iron Man was impossible. And I realized, I think at that point, it's like, well, I thought this was impossible and I just did it. So um, all my friends were doing Chattanooga and or at least a lot of people I knew were doing Chattanooga. And I thought, well, let me sign up and just set a crazy goal. And so started cycling, got a cyclocross bike, did, uh, 
got a training plan, did uh, Gulf Coast triathlons, and it absolutely sucked. I hated the flat because there were no downhills. Um, but my, I did like 40 minutes faster than I did Goose Pond. I thought, well, this is working. Anyway, I had like the rainbows and unicorns version of Ironman Chattanooga. <laughs> Everything went perfectly. I didn't, you know, beat 13 hours, but my goal was to finish before midnight. Um, had just an absolutely awesome day. The swim went well. I looked at the map ahead of time. It's like, well, if you stay right close to the island, it's shorter. So I'm out there. I'm staying as close to the kayaks as I can. All these other people are going by the buoys. I'm like, this is straight. So I'm swimming out there. The kayaks are trying to push me back over. I'm trying to push them back over. Um, but it was fast. Um, the bike was absolutely awesome. That is like the most fun bike course ever. And I just, I knew, I'd, I'd ridden over 100 miles once before I went there. It was Sunrise Century, which is the flattest century in this area. And so my goal was, my whole mantra was, pedal when you have to, coast when you can. Nice. So I didn't get out of the big ring on the first loop because I couldn't make it shift. <laughs> so I'm pushing up the hills, but luckily they weren't very bad. And then... After I had my Red Bull and Snickers bar, it's like, oh, duh, you're pushing way too hard, and realized how to shift the front derailleur, and so had a much easier second loop. <laughs> uh, got off the bike an hour and a bit before I thought I would finish. I mean, I, I was just hoping not to get pulled off the course on the bike, and was so relieved, changed clothes, got out on the run, started doing the run walk, and was really, happy. Um, and then met my Sherpa, Karen, after uh, in the little village right before halfway and realized how late it was. I'm like, I'm just really tired. <laughs> <laughs> I had not been up after 8 o'clock all year. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Man, it's going to be really late. <laughs> Just kept going, hitting the greenway that second time sucked. There was nothing. It was like Jack the Ripper could have been out there. <laughs> the, the sprinklers were on, right? The last thing you want in the marathon is wet feet, and the sprinklers were on. But made it through that, hit the hills again, and the crowds were still awesome on the hills. And just had a great time, great finish. Um, but the funniest thing of all of it, I had gotten this really nice tri bike, and I've gone through five or six different seats. I've had it fitted by three different people, and they all go, perfect. Every time I ride the thing, my back cramps, my shoulder cramps. And so I would gotten this cyclocross bike to use for training last winter, and I, I got different wheels to ride with a cycle club group because they hate the tri bikes. Mm -hmm. So. It, my husband finally says, well, why don't you just ride the bike you're comfortable on? Yeah. So I got some lightweight wheels, I got some clip-on aero bars, and was able to stay in aero for like 90% of the ride, wow. and yeah. had a great time. So yes. my cyclocross bike and I just rocked. And that's with a $14 Kmart seat on it. Wow. <laughs> I got all these fancy seats, all these ISM, you know, all these really nice seats, and there I am rocking for Kmart special. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, Kona uh, last, but uh, first is the uh, next last is. Yeah, just, oh, wow. I so I'll do a little bit of background. Um, I think I had gone to the restroom and I, I thought I was being blamed initially for getting her to go to Ironman Maryland. But actually, in 2011, um, we were at Marianne's house having a little drink or two, and she is trying to decide what something phenomenal we could do for her 50th birthday. So she dreams of this um, New Orleans 70.3. So that's 
It happens to be the day of my birthday. Yeah, the day of my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. The same day. Right. So, yeah, okay. just a coincidence. Yeah, I mean, yeah. really. No, really, it's very planned. You would have to know her. So everything is planned. So anyway, mm -hmm. so that was in November. And we had never, I had only been doing triathlons a few years and just just sprint distance. I, we'd never done the 70.3. So um, anyway, we train. It's in April. We, we get through and we accomplish that, only to come to New Orleans and find out that it, it turns into a duathlon because the water was so bad. So um, sort of like whoever said it where something was canceled, I think, Greg, you said that, you know, we felt like we hadn't really accomplished the goal of the 70.3. So we signed up and it took us about five more to figure out that we were ready for or we thought we were ready for a, a full Ironman. So anyway, signed up for Maryland, trained all summer long, and the original day was October 3rd, and I'm sure many of you know that it got canceled on October 3rd. And so after training all summer long, getting ready, riding up there, having Melissa call us, turn around, we're not going to have it, was kind of a bummer. But anyway, we, we rode back on October 17th, and uh, the weather was not a lot better that day, so we had... We forgot in between, we did a 17.3. Yeah, in between the two weeks, we did do a half iron, just to stay fresh. And so, um, the, the swim was almost canceled again the morning of October 17th. They had decided that, the Coast Guards had decided that the weather was too bad. It was in the Chop Tank River, so the, the name of the river sort of kind of gives you an idea what the water is actually like. It's very choppy. And, um, they changed it from canceling to a 1.2. So everybody, you know, still you're thinking your first Ironman and they're gonna change all of the distances and, and everything and it kind of deflates you, it did me. But anyway, they changed it to two miles and started us at 7.30. So I personally did not like the swim. She loved the swim, but I'm not an ocean swimmer. So it, it was not a fun swim for me, but we made it through the swim. I think I spent, 20 minutes in T1 because it was so cold and uh, got 17. Was it 17 minutes? Yeah. Okay, so 17 <laughs> minutes, changed clothes, got on the bike. The bike was pretty windy, all flat, and then got off the bike, got on the I actually felt really good. Gina told me to eat cold potatoes the whole time, and I did. And I really Is never felt starch? tired. Yeah, <laughs> never felt tired. No goose, no candy bars, no cokes, nothing like that. And the worst thing for me is, is the run. I was just dreading running 26 miles. I don't, I'm not a runner at all, but um, I finished the marathon part about maybe 30 minutes slower than, than the marathon that I actually trained for. I did the Fleet Feet training program and went through it and finished it in 5.40, but it did take me like 6.15 to finish the marathon. But I was very proud of that. That's awesome. And um, I think it was, I finished in 14.26, so I was happy. Yeah. Yeah. Although, I don't feel like I actually accomplished a full because they cut the swim short, you know, by like yeah. 0.4. So I've signed up for Chattanooga. For <laughs> yeah. I will see Dwayne out there and everyone else out there. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'll tell you about uh, Kona um, and my experience there. So the, the year was sort of odd in that uh, 2015, in that uh, you know, I signed up for Maryland, and then when I got into Kona, I didn't get to do Maryland, and I wasn't prepared really to do Kona. I think all year long, I really had a, a big problem with uh, being invited to something that you're really not accomplished to be there. You shouldn't be there. And that's what I thought about Kona, Aww. is that I'm not a, I'm not a great athlete. Uh, I'm not a good athlete. Uh, my fastest uh, Ironman was probably, well, I know it was Florida. I did Florida in about 11.38 or something, 11.40. So, but that's a, a fast flat course, um, and so I, I had this really, to be honest with you, I had this thing all year long where, uh, one, I was, you know, I had a couple murder cases, uh, still do, but I, I had a couple custody cases, so with work, as Kelly had said earlier, that, you know, work was really bogging me down. Uh, if, if, for me, if someone goes to penitentiary, it's a loss, 
you know, if someone loses their kids, it's a loss. And so that was much more important than how I did in, in some Ironman race that I do for fun. And truly, Kona, um, I know the lady's gone now, but man, those are freaking greyhounds. I mean, those are some athletes. The ones that actually qualify, there's some freaking athletes there. And so I knew going into it that um, I, I didn't deserve to be there. And so I think probably psychologically that, that bothered me the whole time. And so leading up to it, you know, I had trained some. I had some bad knees, and so I looked at the course, and I had a plan for the course that was different than any other event that I've ever done, and that is I wanted to finish because I'm not going there again. You know, I'm not going to get there unless, you know, lightning strikes twice and, and they give me another lottery pick. But... Uh, I had to finish because the last thing I wanted to do is go to Kona, have a cramp, have a wreck, have a cold, and not be able to finish. And so my goal was to get out of the swim and finish it and get, get into the bike. And anyway, I'm a decent biker, you know, I'm, I'm a pretty steady bike. So on the swim, the problem was <laughs> the first time I've ever been sick on a swim. I've never been sick on a swim. I, I've sort of talked to folks and said, you know, I bragged a little bit about, you know, Lake Pontchartrain down in 70.3 in New Orleans. It's freaking, sometimes swells there on Pontchartrain. And I'm able to swim over swells and, and get through it. Well, this time I swam out to the, uh, uh, the glove, what's the glove place there? That you swim around the boat? Yeah. Yeah. And so Eric told me, hey, go out there and they'll throw you stuff, you know, on the, on the practice. And I did that. And we had a great time on practice, but come race day, the freaking swells were going. It's pretty decent. So I went out, went around the boat, okay. And about the time I got around the boat, the women age groupers who were five minutes behind me started just running my ass over. I mean, they started running my ass over. So I made it halfway, came around the boat, the body glove boat, and they started just, just jumping me. And, uh, no and then... And then no mercy. And then the swells, I guess, from going right to left started coming left to right. And I guess for some reason, I've never been sick. I got sick. Uh, didn't didn't throw up, but it was my slowest swim ever. And uh, got out of that. And you know, we already talked about the goal for the day, and that was 16 and a half on the on the bike. And I can I can bike 16 and a half all day any day. I mean, I'm an okay biker, you know. And so I had to really, and, and I guess this is a testament about what most of us do, and that is stay within your plan. And so, you know, while I can bike, you know, I biked 18, 19 mile an hour on Ironman, I wanted to go 16 and a half and keep it at that because I did not want to bond. I could not fail. And so all day long, I'm just eating salt all day long and uh, just trying to prepare myself later on for the run walk. And I knew it was going to be a run walk from then. And so, uh, yeah, on the bike, it was out to uh, Javi. On Javi, we, we start to climb. It's raining, you know, wind in our face. But still, I was okay with that because it's 16 and a half. Just, you know, just toot them up the, on the hill and uh, turn around and come back. And I was really within my comfort zone all day on the bike. And I knew that I could do that. You know, I was 18, I was 16. And so all day long, I just stayed within my plan, as most of us do. We, we have a plan. And I uh, got out onto the run, and uh, the run was hot. Uh, <laughs> it was hot. But I ran walk, you know, the first nine miles, and uh, got out onto the highway, and uh, it was just a run walk. You know, at mile nine or so, uh, I came up against Chris Borden. Of course, it was finished. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know? Yeah. And uh, Chris comes up, gives me a big hug, and, and, uh, and he says, this is a freaking death march. <laughs> you know? But of course, he was finishing, you know, and Chris is, you know, the number one finisher at Chattanooga at least two years ago, uh, probably the top age grouper for Ironman that we know. Uh, and, and he was walking, and it, was, it surprised me. But he had gone out, not 16 and a half, he'd gone out 22, and it just, it just beat him. You know, we had 120 degrees out on the road, uh, but I had I had my cooling sleeves on, 
And uh, I guess this is what we have to do as Ironman, is we have to know what we can do. And so within that race, I knew what I had to do. And so each aid station on the bike, I would drink a bottle, throw it down, grab a water bottle, and just wet my sleeves down and go on. And I was comfortable. I was never hot on the bike. Uh, on the run, uh, it was a suck fest, you know, from the, from the get-go. It was a run walk the whole way. Uh, but it was okay because that's what I planned on doing. So we get out on the highway, and now, of course, my favorite time of the day, dark. <laughs> and so I've got my little headlamp on, and I'm able to go from, from uh, uh, the one cone to the next cone that's reflective. And so, you know, I, I run two, walk one, run two, walk one. And if you look at my time, it's like 15 minutes. But, and you think, well, that, that's sorry, Bastard. You know, just walking the whole way. No! I was running and walking the whole freaking way. I'm just a horrible, you know, Dawn and, 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 uh, and, and other folks I know can, can walk fast. Gina can, if, if Gina, if I could, if I could run as fast as Gina walks, I would never run. But I can. I mean, I'm like a 20 minute mile walker. And so when you see my time at 12.50 running, that's me run walking pretty hard. And so, you know, we get out there mile 16 or so, we get to the energy lab. The energy lab was the darkest freaking place on the course. No light whatsoever. No cones whatsoever. We were out in the dark. Was it sticky this year? Well, I, it, it stank the whole time, but I think it was mostly me. <laughs> so, yeah, out there. And so, yeah, it was just a, a run walk the whole way. Um, but, you know, we did... I thought I could do 15, a real conservative plan, and I'm, I'm a 1245 Ironman if I get to train. And I thought, you know, 15, you know, would be pretty conservative, but I wanted to finish. I'll never get there again. And I think I finished probably 1530 or so. So, you know, it's like anybody. You can do it if you want to do it. You know, just stick to the plan. Um, you know, great the last 100 yards going down through the finish like I always do. So. And yeah, I wanted to have some more people here to talk about those goals for them in the upcoming year. And I think we have a lot to tell those people is that, you know, Melissa, uh, you know, Greg, uh, all of us, you know, we can impart to them that they can do it. You know, all you got to do is have a plan. You know, and, and Melissa having a suck fest out there at Arizona, we all have those. And, you know. Gordon Reynolds did it. Well, I beat Gordon Ramsay. Really? Ramsey. Right. <laughs> so, so, you beat Gordon Ramsay. You mentioned that Gordon Ramsay did not get it. And the Hobbit. Sean Astin. Well, I'm saying that. I'm, 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 I'm glad you beat. Wow. Uh, you said I beat uh, Gordon Ramsay because that's who you were focused on. <laughs> but, but, uh, he did look You know, Rennie. High. Rennie. I beat Rennie. You know, the, uh, the, yeah, the yeah. champion, yeah. the world triathlon champion. He, brought, he beat Rennie, Gordon Ramsay, and... And the Rudy. Hobbit. And the Hobbit. <laughs> yeah, and Rudy. And I should be the Hobbit the way I run. You know, and Rudy. But, you know, yeah, you and Rudy. Yeah. So, well, they obviously don't have what it takes. Apparently. Yeah. They did not so, plan the way we so. And what it really is, is someone like Don being a Sherpa, you know, yeah. being out there supporting us. <laughs> you know, yes. if they someone, you know, Dana can attest to it, you know, if you got someone out there supporting you, it makes it so much yeah. easier. Remember, you know, so that, that's why yeah. it's just, yeah. And Kendra has, well, Kendra has nobody. <laughs> she has, she has Marie. Yes. My sister. Her sister. Her sister, sister. Yeah. Her sister yeah. forgot where she parked yeah. the car. So I'm, I would like us to go out there and, and get other people involved in, in these because I think there is this mystique about it. And once you do one of them, like Marie was saying, is that once you do even a part of it, you know you can do it. Right. You know, it's not that difficult. You know, you just have to manage the race. So uh, let's get out there and support the uh, Ironman. I would like to challenge everyone who has finished an Ironman who has never been at the finish line for it's, someone else. Oh, I love it is a completely different experience. Yeah. You never understand how it feels to see those people cross the finish line if you've never done that. I mean, I know it's an, it's an awesome accomplishment to finish, but... Unless you've been there to watch someone that you love finish. 
Or like that's the a whole other world. for people that I had rent run walk with. Yeah. You know, you, and like my cousin said, um, I was very fortunate to have my cousins there. They were like the bomb of Sherpa. But they said they had an invested relationship. Where's Bob? Oh. Does anybody see Bob? Where about Carol? Yeah. They, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, oh, Bob. Oh, totally. It's Carol. And we go, it's Carol. But if you go back, and they had gotten invested <laughs> with that's all great. these people themselves. And yeah. then I cheer them on. You do. Did so and so make it? I don't know. I don't you meet people. You know, they're like, that's like, they're like, oh, all these people are like, who are you talking about? Like, yeah. You meet people's families and you, you know, they don't yeah. have a app or whatever to track their local yeah. membership. You know, you're pulling their person up. So it's, it's yeah. a totally different experience. Yeah. yeah. And I, of course, have my Sherpa, you know, I come across the finish line at Kona and I'm slapping hands, you know, you go down the 150 yards, it's Kona, it's the world championship. And my Sherpa is there. And of course, who did I hug? Cena. <laughs> Cena was there. He came to camp a few that, years ago. That was so funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cena was there. And said, Parker, oh, yeah. you're here. I said, Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, I broke through the barricade. Yeah, no, no, I finished. You know, here's my. Yeah. That was so funny. Can you come in on the winds? You know, that's so legendary. Uh, it was a sump fest, my friend. You know what I'm saying? The, the it was going out. Uh, of course, it was coming against you a little bit. And again, I'm, I'm just, I'm not trying to. To pedal hard. I'm really trying to keep within 16 and a half miles an hour. And we go up, like I said, Javi, uh, rain in our face. We turn around and come back. It's really fast at five or six miles. But then when we turn back towards uh, Kona, uh, the wind was to our right and across our shoulder coming at us. And it it was that way for 40 something miles. It, is it was 3%. tough. Yeah, and how yeah, fast would you say the sustain the gusts were sustained? Is it over twenty sustained? No, I don't think it was over twenty sustained at all. But you know, on the suck fest meter, it was a suck fest. <laughs> I mean, it was just really it was it was constant right here. And so, with uh, about fifteen miles to go, I passed somebody, and I was conservative all day. So, so like Kelly said on on the run. When I was coming back in on the bike, I was passing a lot of people because I felt okay. And so when I'm coming back with 15, 18 miles to go, the guy says, that I just passed, he says, how much further? I said, well, I think it's about an hour or so back, you know, because I'm thinking 15, 16 miles an hour. It took an hour and a half. I mean, wow. it was it was straight up coming at you. So it, it was it blow you across the road or did it not? It did not blow, blow me across the road, but I mean, the wind gusts would, would rattle you a little bit. So, uh, and I guess it's that way, Eric knows. It's probably that way every year. It's every day. Every, yeah, every, every day. hour is different. I've been yeah. out there on Hot B where you could not stand up on the side of the road yeah. without being blown. Now, I actually had a car and I was leaning against the car. Yeah. So I didn't get blown over so I could watch what was going on. And it changes. 30 minutes is like that, then it moves. It's like, it's wrong and it chases the cyclist. Yeah. Because when you're coming back in later in the day, it's like, yeah. No, so, we're going to give you some more. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going up, you know, the, um, at mile 40 or so, you know, the wind's in your face, and you're thinking, well, hell, on the way back, I'll have this. Be awesome. I'll have it, man, cool. And so you climbing and all that, and, you know, the rain is really hitting you in the face, and it's in your face, and you're thinking, hell, when I go back towards Conan, it's going to be right against my back. I'm going to, I'm going to push hard. And then when you come down, it's against you again. It, it has circled around that island. And it's an all day. It's so really, it's really yeah. Good. So yeah, yeah. It's just uh, it's. And again, you know, I'm not Dink on the run. You know, I'm not a world class athlete. You know, I'm not Eric on the bike, a world class athlete. So I'm out there. You know, I'm out there. You know, I'm, out there you know, I'm like like uh, Kendra on the swim. And so you're out there amongst really the truly the best in the world. And uh, that's a little different in that you know when I go to a race. You know, I like to joke. I like to, you know, I like to get people to joke. And I had a great time. You know, we had a great vacation, but those guys are fucking serious. <laughs> I mean, they should be because they're they're going for a world championship. You know, and so you expect that from them. Uh, so it's a little different, and uh, everybody needs to keep doing Iron Man and get in that lottery. Or, or you have that spouse who is that athlete who signs you up for a. A uh, try the weekend before you come home, and you've That's never right. swam open water in here. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, a bike that weighs 
be yeah, fine. And there, was, and there was a high surf advisory. Oh, my God. And rent you a bike. And rent you a bike. Well, and don't, $10 don't, a day. don't have that bike. And, <laughs> that and, uh, was a $4,000 bicycle. I mean, $10 yeah. a so, so, yeah, I think the bike that we rented her for that little try was probably worth at least 50 bucks. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm helping with the race, and she comes back towards me. I'm out on the, you know, I'm guiding traffic, and, and, and then the athletes coming through. And she rolls past me. She says, there's something wrong with this bike. I'm like, oh, yeah. There's something wrong with this bike. That's probably the peddler, you know, because you ain't trained to do this. So I get back to transition. Sure enough, there's a broken spoke. And so that, that tire was doing this in the brake every time around. So. That's the longest 10 miles of your life. All right, thank you all for coming. Appreciate it.